If you followed along with me for the last year, you'll know that I have converted a cargo trailer over to a camper and my wife and I have stayed in it for several days this year. Well, I've done some off-season maintenance here and I found out that I don't like the shore power hookups on it. So if you'd like to see the series of videos that I've already made on building my cargo camper trailer the first time, you can click on the link right up here and see all those videos. And if any of my videos help you out, please leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe and help me out here so I know what works for you and what helps you and what doesn't help you so I can make better videos that will help you in your build. I installed this wiring about a year ago for the 110 outlet 30 amp plug-in. I used some 10 gauge, it's called 10-2, Romex that I had on hand. but Well, this copper wire is good for houses. It's not so good for cars and transportation vehicles. Apparently, this solid core stuff can vibrate loose. Instead, they're saying to use stranded wire, which is more flexible. And so I went and got some what's called 10-3 stranded wire from Lowe's. And it's got the green, and it's got the black, and it's got the white. And this is what I'm going to use to plug into the 30 amp power port. All right, our first step is to install these three wires into this. So I've got a white one, and they're painted. This one's white, green, and black, color-coded. And obviously, we've got white, green, and black wires. I strip off about a half inch to five-eighths of insulation using a stripper tool. Twist them up really good. Make sure that we've backed off the screws so that we look down here and it's all open. I'm going to tighten the screw up on the outside. And this pinches the wire. And then give them the tug test to make sure they're all tight. Now it's ready to install. This is the setup I've got. I've got the power port with the 10-3 wire screwed on the back. I've got two inch by number 10 screws pan head so they won't scratch my fingers. And I've got some butyl tape to seal the out, uh, back side of the power port to the trailer. And this is what it looks like on the inside. The two inch screws went through the aluminum, through the insulation and drilled into the 3 8 plywood here. The load center I'm gonna be using is a Square D brand. It's catalog number QO2L30S. It's called a QO load center. These are the breakers I'm gonna use. These are QO120 breakers. There's two of them, they're 20 amp breakers. This is the top of the breaker up here and make sure the clips look like that when you see the top of the breaker, all right? If you don't have them looking like that, they will not fit in your breaker box. Okay, I'm gonna to try to show you how this breaker fits in the breaker box. So I'm gonna take the cover off the breaker box. So the bottom of the breaker is gonna snap onto this horizontal pole here. This part right here will. And so you'll push it in It'll snap on. Then you'll swing it up and push it in at the top and it will snap on. And the breaker is installed. To uninstall it, you pull it down and then you wiggle it and it will pop off that bottom bar. Okay, I'm going to install the box. So I'm gonna put a screw through the hole in the box inside and it's gonna screw it into the wall. All right, so we've got our box mounted. We've got our cable here. This cable is gonna to have to go through this hole. But first it needs a cable clamp. This is a three quarter inch cl cable clamp. And it screws into the box like so. All right, so we've got the, strip, the insulation stripped off. And now we're going to lift the clamp up and feed it through. 
clear. And now we're going to tighten the clamp down. Okay, this is difficult because it's tight space, but I want to show you one wire at a time. So I've still got my black wire disconnected. It hasn't hooked up to anything yet. Here's the green ground. I haven't hooked to anything. White wire is hooked over here to this bar right there. So I strip it about a half an inch, put it in a hole and tighten this screw down on top of it. Pinch it down really tight. Okay, we've got two 20 amp circuits in here. We've got one, two, but we only have one black wire. Well, both sides have to have a black wire to be activated, to be hot. What I'm going to do is make a bridge. I call it a bridge, right? Out of a piece of 10 gauge wire right there, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is put this black wire right here, here, but also one of this, one of these sides here and the other side here. And so what this will do is take the current from here and put it here. So this will be hot on both sides. Okay, now you can see that I've got the, both the wires stuck down this side and I've got this bridge right here stuck on this side and tightened out. All right, give them a little tug test, make sure that they're tight and they're not coming out. Now we're ready to run the 12 gauge. So we're gonna have some 12-3 stranded wire that goes in the sides here and here to the breakers and they're going to loop around over here to the two boxes for the 110 outlets. So that's what we're working on right now. Here's the two boxes, here's the two outlets. Now they are, there's the left breaker side, the right breaker side, the left box and the right box. We need lesser wire for a 20 amp than we do for a 30 amp. 30 amp needed the 10 gauge. 20 amp is only going to need 12 gauge. It's got a higher number, but that's a smaller wire. So we're going to have 12 gauge stranded wire that will go to each breaker. Okay, I've taken time and put in clamps here, 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 and up here. So there's two on this side, wire clamps, and there's two on the bottom down there. Now it looks like a spaghetti mess, okay? So I've got a green, white, and a black wire right here, 12 gauge. They are right here, the three of them. This is the 10 gauge green wire. It still has not been hooked up. And then down here, we've got the green, white, and black wire, 12 gauge for the right circle. All right, so now we need to, first step is to put both of these wires, strip them and plug them right here. We've got two screw holes. So we're gonna put both the white wires right there. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the two white wires screwed in right there. Now we've got to start putting in the uh, breakers. So we've got to strip the black wires and attach them to one side of the breaker and snap them in. This is what I was talking about. The breakers have a screw on this side. So back the screw off right here. Take a screwdriver, back the screw off. And you're gonna stick that black wire in here and then you're gonna tighten it up and pinch it in there. Then you're gonna put the breaker in, like I told you earlier, you're gonna snap the bottom of it in and tilt it up. And the black wire will be hooked onto the bottom. Okay, on this one, you can see that I've got the black wire attached here. The screw is tight there. Now I'm going to snap it in. And now you can see that black wire right here and it's screwed in underneath there. All right, now let me get some light in here so that you may be able to see. You can see I've got both the breakers in, both the black wires in, both the white wires in. Now all I've got to do is strip these green wires and put a wire nut on them and they'll all be bound together. All right, now you can see that I've trimmed all those back and joined all three of those with a wire nut. And the cover can be put back on this and it's ready to be activated. Well, I've run into a complication on running, uh, wiring the 110 outlets. What has happened here is I have put in crimp connectors to attach the stranded wires to my outlets. The problem is the box, the electrical box, is not deep enough for the outlets to go in all the way with those crimped connectors on. Uh, it's about a quarter inch too shallow. So what I'm gonna to have to do is take these metal boxes off and replace them with these deeper plastic boxes. As you can see, I removed the metal boxes and put these blue plastic job boxes in, screwed them to the wall, 
and remove the little tabs here, right here, one on each side for the conduit to come in from underneath. All right, like I said, I put these crimped connectors on here and heat shrink tubing on each of these wires. Now, when you hook it up to this, you have the green wire, of course, goes on the ground. But there's a silver screw and there's a gold screw. Black's going to always go on the gold screw. White is always going to go on the silver screw. Now, in certain lighting, it's very hard to tell. So you have to really watch your lighting to get your polarity correct. When the two yellow ones are on, that's good. And the red one's off, that's good. That means the polarity is right and the ground is right. And turn the other one on. Plug it in and it's right as well. So we're ready to go. Now I'm going to put the face plates on the outlets. All right, so I had that fire problem here with the combustibility of the insulation. So I cut a piece of aluminum flashing. It was about a one and a half inch strip, about eight inches long. And I rolled it around and I made a loop out of it and slid it right in there. This will shield the insulation from any hot wires. That wraps up today's video.